Hello Hard Video Audio stuff, welcome back. Cine 1, 2, 3 and 4. Have you ever wondered what the difference is? The picture profiles that people choose when they shoot video on the Sony Alpha cameras is a subject that kind of polarises the crowds. There are those who prefer the kind of flatter S-log type profiles in the argument that they unlock the dynamic range of your camera. And then there are those who prefer the Cine and other profiles that are available in the argument that they are flat enough for most applications. Also many people say that they are better suited to the 8-bit XAVC-S codec that's used in the Sony Alpha cameras, which is probably true. Plus they let you shoot at a much lower native ISO of usually 100 or 200 as opposed to the often 800, 1600 or sometimes 3200 ISO depending on which Sony Alpha camera you own. So what I want to find out is which Cine profile gives you the most dynamic range, is the most contrasty and in what scenario would you use one over the other. So I went out and I did some testing and here is what I found. Taking a look at this fairly dynamic scene and with the exposure at a good level on our talent's face, you can see that it has really nice low contrast. However, we are getting a few areas of clipped highlights. Cine 2 seems to have very similar contrast levels to Cine 1, except that it seems to hold the highlights much better. When we look at the same problem area as before, you can see that we'd have recoverable highlights. And if you look at the histogram, you can see that nothing passes 100%. Cine 3 tells a very different story. The light on the left hand side of our talent is almost looking quite harsh even though I've used diffusion. Once again we're getting clipped highlights and you can see this reflected in our histogram. Cine 4 has an interesting look to it. Even though some of our scene passes 100%, it doesn't seem to clip the highlights. Rather the curve of this profile seems to roll off the highlights and the same thing goes for the shadows. Looking at all four together you can really compare contrast levels, detail in the shadows, the way they hold the highlights and the way they reproduce skin tones. This next scene is going to be challenging for most cameras. We've got no lighting whatsoever inside and outside we've got bright sunlight. Rather than exposing for either my skin tone or the exterior, I've actually aimed for somewhere in the middle in the hope that it will reveal the nuances of each picture profile. And here Cine One's doing really well. We're getting blown out highlights from the window of course, but actually there's a lot of detail left on my face and within the room. Now with Cine 2, and we are getting similar levels of detail in the shadow and mid-tone areas compared to Cine 1. However, when we look at our highlight areas, we are getting more information there. This difference in highlight information comes down to the video output of the two profiles. Cine 1 has a maximum output of 109%, Cine 2 it's 100, so that will explain a lot. Now looking at Cine 3, and we are getting slightly more contrast as we did before. However, I'm quite impressed by the amount of information left in the highlights way more than I was expecting. In fact, when I compared Cine 3 to Cine 1, I actually think Cine 1 possibly had more blown out highlights than this. Cine 4 really impressed me in this test. Yes, we're getting more contrast, but look at those highlights. It is retaining way more information than I was expecting, even more, I suspect, than Cine 2. But hey, let's check them out all together and we can compare them side by side. So here we can see that kind of raised shadow, low contrast look on Cine 1 and 2 much more contrast on Cine 3 and 4, particularly Cine 4, blown out highlights on every single one of them, but less so on Cine 2 and Cine 4. So, to answer my questions from earlier on, which has the most dynamic range? Well, it's clearly Cine 2. It, it, was the, it had the most dynamic range in every test that I did. And on the flip side, which was the most contrasty, Again, it was clearly Cine 3, and it won in every single test. It had the most contrast. And to answer the question of in what scenario does one work better than the other, well, it takes a bit more explaining, but here's what I found. I found that Cine 1 profile has very, very similar contrast levels to Cine 2. However, on the whole, with similar exposure levels, I found that it didn't hold the highlights quite as well. So I'm left struggling to think of a scenario where I would use the Cine 1 profile over Cine 2. Cine 2, I think, is possibly my favourite profile along with Cine 4 being a close second, just because it's got way more dynamic range than the Cine 3 and 4, and it really holds the highlights nicely. I would certainly use Cine 2 and maybe even Cine 4 when you're shooting outside, because just because they hold the highlights better. And if you need more contrast, use Cine 4. If you need more dynamic range, use Cine 2. Cine 3 in my test had the most contrast, so for that reason, I would recommend using it in scenes where you have a lot of control over the light in your scene, and you want 
a more kind of baked in punchy look to your footage that doesn't need so much um, color grading in editing. While Cine 4 has the second most contrast of the Cine profiles, I really can understand why people are using it. It has a really interesting curve where it tends to roll off the highlights and the shadows really nicely and yeah, I totally get it. I really get why people use it. But I do just want to say that a lot of people do recommend Cine 4 as an alternative to S-Log 2 and 3, saying that it has similar levels of dynamic range, which in, in my test I found that not to be true. I found Cine 2 was the nearest to S-Log 2. So that would be my advice. If you want something that where you can shoot at a much lower ISO, go with Cine 2. You've got quite a lot of dynamic range, still nowhere near S-Log 2, but that would be my recommendation. Um, Cine 4 is still great though. So to sum up, Cine 1 is a nice, reasonably low contrast profile, but it does clip the highlights easier than some others. Just make sure you watch your exposure, if anything, just ever so slightly underexpose. Cine 2 holds the highlights really well and is nice and low contrast. Um, it's probably my pick, definitely try it. Cine 3 has the most contrast and it clips the highlights as easy as Cine 1. Be careful when you're using it, but enjoy all the same. And Cine 4 I'm gonna call medium contrast and it rolls off the highlights and the shadows really nicely. Give it a go. And that's all for now and I really hope that was helpful. Do you know, I love making these videos. I learn so much from doing these tests and, and in turn, when you comment, I learn even more. And I'm hoping when you've finished watching this video, go and check the comments and let's learn from each other and um, hopefully we can help each other out and shoot better video. All right, until next time.